Welcome to our very first Codesys training video. In this video I want to talk about the connection between the Codesys IDE and our device. As you probably know, once you have created a project in Codesys, it is usually downloaded to the device via Ethernet. And especially in the beginning there are always some little problems making that connection work, so I wanted to go through the necessary steps to make sure you can uh, connect your device successfully. The first thing is the software levels. We already always release a complete set of software. We release a Codesys IDE together with a package and operating system and Codesys runtime files for the device. So my Codesys version here is 3.5 service pack 8 and I have our package installed in version 3.5.8.6. On the device I have the same version uh, Codesys runtime installed together with the fitting operating system which where the version depends on, on the device I have. You can check both the operating system version and also the Codesys runtime version in the service project that is installed by default on every device. If you go to the daemon and then uh, CDS for Codesys, you can uh, check the user version in the, in the list that will appear and it should show the same version as the package version on your, PC, on your Codesys. So that's a very important step. The device operating system, Codesys runtime, the PC, Codesys and the package, they should all have the according level. The second thing is the configuration of the Ethernet port on the device. I have my serial program here. I'm connected to the serial uh, console of the device and I'm already logged in. And I will just start by checking if my Ethernet port is open and if it's configured correctly. I can see this is my Ethernet port ETH0 and it already has, has an IP address and also a subnet mask. So everything is configured correctly. If it's not, or if you want to reset the Ethernet port, which can sometimes help if the connection doesn't want to happen, you can do that by writing this. Now the Ethernet port is not listed anymore, it's deactivated and I will activate it again by reassigning the IP address. Okay, and if I check again, it's again listed here with the correct IP address. So this is the default address that uh, a device has from our side and uh, my computer is configured in a way that it uh, can work with that IP address, so I will leave it like that. That's basically already the next step. Um, the PC that you're using has to have an IP address in the same subnet as the device is. So the device um, has the address 192.168.135.6 so your PC should have an IP 192.168.135. Point something, where something is basically any number but 6. Make sure that you configure your Ethernet port on your PC accordingly. In my case uh, I have uh, a separate uh, uh, Ethernet port uh, just for communicating with our devices using a USB Ethernet adapter. So if you cannot uh, reconfigure your, your first Ethernet port because you are in your company Ethernet, you can use such a USB Ethernet adapter to get a second Ethernet port on your device and configure that in the correct way. Once you've done that, you should be able in a command window to ping the device. Let's see, no, not like this. 8135.6. Let's see if it works. Okay, so we have a very, very low time to reach our device. 
so everything wor works and the computer can see the device in the in the in the ethernet network so that's very good okay now we're ready to go into codices the first thing you should do if you haven't done so already go into tools and then options and in the chapter device editor make sure that this option is activated use classic communication page this gives you a few more insights and options when you try to connect uh, to the device okay the next step i've talked about the correct versions and codices as you know you can update the device description right here right click on device and then click on update device and uh, make sure that you have the correct version of the device description installed for me it now pointed to a newer one but the one it, that should be that should be used is 3.5.8.6 so if in doubt check it click double click again so it will be loaded and then you're ready to go i think codices will always automatically go to the newest version but this is not always the the correct version use the version that fits to everything else okay now we can try to connect to the device uh, by double clicking here if you do that the first time uh, you probably won't have a gateway uh, listed here i will delete mine as well so if you do this the first time you have to uh, to add a gateway the good thing here is you don't have to configure anything so just click on add gateway and on OK and you're done. There are no settings to be made. Now you can already scan the network. You can do that by clicking here on scan network or by double clicking on the device. Yay! As you can see we already have uh, found our device so in my case we're already done. There are some little things uh, that you still can do if the device is not found here you can disable the filter for the target ID, set this to none. Sometimes that helps codices finding the device. If it still uh, cannot find the device, there is one more thing that you can try, and that is restarting uh, the gateway. So you have to go down to the uh, uh, taskbar here and look for this symbol. This is the uh, codices gateway running. And if you right click here, you can stop the gateway. You see that this square uh, uh, got gray and now you can also see that this circle here got red. So now we know the gateway is off and then we can restart it. There are many cases where this also helps uh, uh, to uh, helps codices to find the device. And these are all the steps um, that can be taken. If you still have trouble connecting to your device, by all means contact our technical support and we will surely try to help you make that connection happen. Thank you for watching.